You're listening to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast. Today's episode features Casey Allen, a member of the University of Tennessee at Martin's rodeo team. This is Scott Williams, the host of Real Foot Forward, where every single week we talk about the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee. And today I have a very, very special guest um, here who's going to chat with us a little bit about rodeoing. And she's actually in my old stomping grounds of Fort Worth, where I went to high school. Casey Allen, welcome to Real Foot Forward. Hi, thank you guys so much for having me. So what, what are you doing in Fort Worth right now? So I am down here at the Will Rogers Coliseum right now. I am at the Women's Rodeo World Championship. It's the first event of its kind. They're giving out uh, just under a million dollars this week to all female participants in different roping events and barrel racing. So I'm down here competing in the barrel racing and the breakaway roping all week. So um, we're going to um, talk a little bit about what all that means. Um, okay. And I'm going to ask you some really dumb questions, but you know, <laughs> That's I, okay. I know that uh, you are a rodeo superstar and a lot of people listening <laughs> are, don't know that much about rodeo. So we're going to do, you're going to educate us a little bit, but let's back up a little bit um, to your mom and dad. I understand your parents actually met while um, rodeoing. Yeah, so it was kind of a cool little story. My mom's from Michigan. My dad's from Iowa. He was working in Pennsylvania and they went to a rodeo. He was a steer wrestler, which means that he's one of those crazy guys that jumps off a horse and like tackles a steer. Um, And she was a barrel racer like I am. And they met at a rodeo, a clown like picked her out of the crowd for an act. And my dad was like, oh my goodness, that woman's beautiful. And they started dating. And yeah, my mom still competes. My dad gave it up a little while ago competitively. So So they were actually fixed up by a rodeo clown. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. And then are you, uh, do you have other siblings? Yeah. So my sister was a school teacher. Now she has the wonderful job of a stay at home mom. And then my brother is a farrier, uh, which means he puts the horseshoes on horses, uh, just like my dad does. So they're both older. They kind of got out of rodeo a little bit ago, but they're, they still cheer us on. So, um, did you guys, as you were growing up, did you live somewhere where there were, did you have a barn close by and you have a lot of horses? So we were really blessed. Um, we had a barn at our place in an arena, so we didn't have to board out horses or anything, but I grew up in Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, so it's not really a horse centered area. There's not a lot of rodeos to go to up there. Um, so I had to travel a bit more in high school to get to really compete and get outside of my comfort zone. Um, but I always had horses growing up, had ponies when I was little and then kind of, you know, leveled up throughout the years and got on bigger and better horses kind of, um, then that led me all the way to Tennessee. (laughs) So, and we're going to explore that in just a minute and how you ended up at UT Martin. But, um, when I was little, my dad, uh, showed horses and I would go, um, uh, when I was very little and, sh- and show like quarter horses and saddle horses. So I know a little bit about it, but um, what first got you interested and what do you remember about being, you know, what are your earliest memories of showing and, and uh, competing? So I would say my earliest memories were just getting to ride all kinds of ponies around the house. And we'd go to like local saddle clubs and little deals where, you know, you'd get ribbons, not money or anything. It was really fun. And you'd like, have Halloween costume contests and stuff like that. And you do the races where you had to grab like a Coke bottle off of a barrel, or you'd have to run down and turn your horse around in a little course and then come back and do like obstacle courses and things of that nature. Um, I did not like to go fast that much when I was younger, uh, which is kind of funny because now it's kind of what I'm known for. Um, so I, my ponies and I would just do all these crazy events. We'd go like swimming and little cricks and stuff. And, it was just, it was just a lot of fun. 
And so it, you probably, um, like I know a lot of athletes who are successful, like you are now, a lot of athletes spent their childhood really um, learning and competing and getting better and better at their sport. Um, I'm assuming, and you can tell me if that's if it's right or not, but you and your family had to really be immersed in the culture of uh, horse shows and rodeos. Is that right? Oh yeah, definitely. So I was kind of the, just your horse obsessed kid in elementary school. Um, I just thought about horses all the time, but I, you know, still wanted to play basketball or try soccer or run track and do all these other things. Um, and then right around ninth grade, my mom was like, okay, like, do you want to be a basketball player? Do you want to run track? Do you want to, you know, really focus on the horses? Like you got to pick. And then I was like, okay, well, I, I guess we're going to do the rodeo thing. And then I went head first into it a little bit more. And then it was, it was all in. <laughs> and so you you, um, actually were, you became part of the Inter- international professional rodeo association at age 14, right? Yes. And what, yep. what does that mean? What, how did, how did that happen? So that's, uh, it's like an amateur association, um, in the fact that, people under the age of 18 can enter um, instead of being like all professional over the age of 18. Um, But it was the highest level association that you could enter being under 18, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, So like when I, I finally made it to their finals when I was, I think I just turned 18 and I was one of the youngest people there. Um, So I was still competing against people that did it professionally um, that was their full-time job. Um, I, I got my rear end handed to me the first couple of years because, you know, I was this kid that was really successful on the youth circuit and my parents kind of skipped the high school rodeo scene. And they were like, we're going to throw you right in with these career people. Um, plus I can compete right alongside my mom. Um, they're like, and you're just going to have to go out and get better. And so I was, yeah, I was against pretty much full-time uh, competitors being a high school kid. <laughs> it was, it was really interesting. And so what, what, what exactly is, um, a day in the life of a, uh, rodeo star, um, who's competing, you know, what walk us through a competitive day in your sport. So do you want like a, a day around the house or like a, like what we're going through down here in competition? Yeah. Like what you're going through right now. So like this morning, um, the first time that I had to compete was just after eight o'clock this morning. Um, I woke up around 4 a.m. I went down to the barn, took care of my horse, kind of the first round of giving him his medicine, give him a massage, uh, things like that. Check his water. What, and and what, um, elab- <laughs> elaborate on that just a little bit. I'm curious um, because I know that, you know, like in all sports, your equipment and your tool, um, you know, is crucial. Um, in your case, you've got one that's living and that's a lot that you have to take care of. So tell us a little bit about that as well. Like, like what goes into caring for the horse, both just in general, but then also on a competition day. So I have three horses down here with me. Um, and they definitely, I mean, we treat them just like any superstar football player would be treated. Um, you know, they have to do their stretches. They have to get workouts in every day. They get massages, they get chiropractic, acupuncture. I mean, I don't do the chiropractic and acupuncture. Um, but they, you know, we brush out their manes and tails, uh, put liniment on them. They get ice baths after they compete. Um, they get hand walked a lot. Uh, just kind of, and then they still have to, you know, they're still kind of like pets, even though they're high level athletes. So I still go in there and give them treats and love on them um, and all things like that. So it's, they're, they're, they're more of a partner. Um, they do so much for us. Um, we just take the best care of them we can. And is this a uh, switch Mako and Vegas? Yes. <laughs> so I yep. did a little research. So, yeah. um, <laughs> so you've got these horses that you travel around with and, um, do you, do you have like, um, a gigantic, uh, really cool trailer that you carry them around in? <laughs> kind of. Um, so I'm super, super blessed with the trailer that I have right now. Um, I have, we have a F-350 that we pull it with. So a dually truck and then my horse trailer, it fits four horses and it's about 30 foot long. And then it's got a living quarters in the front. So it's got a bed, a stove top, a fridge, a microwave. My mom just made us something in a crock pot in it last night. Um, So we literally do live out of our trailers. Um, I came down here with my three horses, my mother's horse, and we put 
16 bales of hay, bags of shavings, fully stocked food, everything. Wow. <laughs> so we're, we're pretty self-sufficient. We have a shower, everything in there. And so you, you get your horses ready. Um, and then what do you do to get yourself ready? So I do a lot of mental toughness training. I'd say that's the number one thing. That's something that, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about. Coach Luthi is really, really good at teaching to us. Um, I do work out when I'm on the road a lot, um, just to keep myself in physical, you know, good physical condition. Um, I'm a runner. I love to run. And if I can't find somewhere to run, like the past Saturday, we were in Benton, Arkansas, and it was a little sketchy kind of area to run in. So I did like a, kind of like a hit workout, body weight workout, um, about 20 minutes, like squats, high knees, jumping jacks, all that fun stuff. Um, try to eat healthy when I'm on the road. Um, I rope my dummy every day. So I break my rope and we have like a fake calf kind of that we bring with us. Uh, my name's, uh, I named him Wilbur. <laughs> um, and I rope that for about 30 minutes, at least once or twice a day when I'm on the road to keep myself sharp, keep my reaction time there. Um, and then I just try to get as much sleep as I can, which I'm going to have to be up at AM tomorrow. So it doesn't happen that much, but. <laughs> and I guess, I guess, uh, mental preparedness is probably as important as physical preparedness. Oh yeah. I would, um, you know, coach Luthi always tells us that at the level that we compete at, basically, once you get past the high school level, it is 80% mental at least, and about 20% physical. I mean, it is you know, you might, in the breakaway roping, you have about three to four seconds to make everything happen. In the barrels, you have about 15 seconds and it has to pretty much be a reaction. And, you know, I'm down here competing against my idols, the people I literally grew up watching. Um, so you definitely have to go in there confident and prepared and just grateful for whatever happens. <laughs> now for, for folks who don't have any idea, um, you know, what happens once that gate throws open and you, you know, go running out there on your horse. Can you talk us through a little bit about what, what rodeoing actually is and what it is that you compete in? Yeah. So we'll start with the women's events. Um, as I said, I'm in the barrel racing and the breakaway roping and barrel racing is basically you have three barrels in like a cloverleaf pattern, kind of looks like a triangle. And we run around them. That's the cloverleaf pattern. We run around them as fast as we can. And you get penalized if you knock a barrel over or if you go off the pattern. But the goal is to be as fast as you can around those barrels and come back. And then in the breakaway roping, we basically chase a calf down the arena and they have a stopwatch going. And the fastest person who ropes it wins. And you've got to catch it a certain way. And then if you don't let the calf out in front of you enough when you chase him, um, like give him a head start, you get penalized for that. And then down here, there's girls competing in the team roping, which is an event that a lot of places men and women can compete in, um, where one person will rope the head of a steer around the horns. And then the other person will come in and rope the feet and they'll kind of turn their horses towards each other and stretch them out, which it doesn't hurt the cattle. Um, and then in the men's events, the remaining events, we split up into basically timed events and rough stock events are what we call them. It gets a little confusing. You can pause me if I'm getting too ahead. Um, no, no, no. This is, this is good. <laughs> but the rest of the timed events, so there's the tie on roping where the men chase the calf like we do in the breakaway roping. But instead of the rope breaking off the horn and the run being over like it would for the girls, the boys will get off their horse and run to the calf and they'll flip him down and they'll tie three of his legs together, which again, I know it sounds a little bit like, what if it hurts him? But it actually doesn't. It's something that cowboys do out on the ranches to doctor cattle and take care of them, make sure they get their vaccinations and everything. Um, so it's something really natural that cowboys grow up doing. And then there's the steer wrestling, like I talked about, where they'll chase a steer down and then they'll tackle him, which usually doesn't hurt the steer either because the cowboys get hurt a lot more, which is quite funny. Um, and then in the rough stock events, those are like your bull riding, your bareback riding and your saddle bronc riding, which people, the crowds tend to really love. Everybody knows about bull riding. Um, and then bareback riding is basically the crazy cowboys uh, strap themselves on with a suitcase handle looking rigging. And they try to stay on for eight seconds and they try to perform as well as they can. And then the horse tries the bucket hard, as hard as it can. And that's how they're scored. And then saddle bronc riding is the same concept, except it's with a 
small saddle looking structure instead of a suitcase handle. And at the college radios, you'll see one more event on the women's side called the goat tying. It's kind of like the tie down roping, um, but they don't rope. Uh, they, they go after a goat. And they don't rope it. They run down the arena to the goat and then they flank the goat and tie him down. So that's kind of the rundown. <laughs> now, I um, this past year, of course, uh, the rodeo at UT Martin is always a really, really big, fun deal. Um, so I went the year before last. Um, mm-hmm. to that, I mean, it was pouring down rain that year. I don't know if you were oh, there. Oh yeah, that. I was there that night. That was the short go. Yeah, boy, it yeah. rained and <laughs> rained and rained. It was huge, like yeah. a downpour. Um, mm-hmm. We were hiding in a barn trying to warm our horses up between stalls. It was, yeah, it was cold. Interesting. I, I remember that. Yeah, it was a crazy night. Um, mm-hmm. But it was my first time to go to the UT Martin Rodeo. Um, when you were in high school and you were trying to figure out where you wanted to go to college, um, you started obviously looking for a college that had a strong rodeo program. What drew you to UT Martin? So I, I had a lot of offers from schools and I hadn't planned on looking at uh, UT Martin and I met a member of the booster club. Um, cause I wanted to go a little farther from home. You know, I was from Pennsylvania. I was like, Oh, I'm going to go out West farther, you know, not be as close to the house. Um, I met a member of the booster club and she convinced me to go look at the school. And really what drew me to the program was first off the academics at UT Martin were so beyond many of the other schools that I looked at. Um, Just the quality of education there was so great. The class sizes were small. I loved the academic side of it. And then I, I mean, coach Luthie is a legend. He's, he's been in the industry for, I think he's been coaching around 40 years. He's been at uh, UT Martin for around 25 years. He's got, he's got a great reputation. He's coached championship teams, but he's a great Christian and he's a great mentor. And he really invests times, like invests so much time in his students outside of the arena that really what clinched the deal was knowing that I'd get to work with coach Luthi at UT Martin. Um, and it just, everything fell into place. <laughs> and, and so you're, um, what year are you? So I'm a graduate student this year. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, we ended up getting, uh, so in college rodeo, you can rodeo for four years in your undergraduate, and then uh, you get an extra year of eligibility to be a graduate student. Mm -hmm. Um, And then with last year, our season getting cut off, we actually got a year extended. So I'll be a graduate assistant coach next year and still rodeoing in our region. Um, So that's really neat. I, I didn't know if I wanted to come back to school, but getting to college rodeo and UT Martin having a great MBA program again, just brought me back. I was like, okay, I'll come back. <laughs> That's fantastic. I know they're, they're really glad to have you back into the program. Um, what is your uh, concentration? What are you studying? So as of right now, I'm getting a master's in business administration and I'm, I picked up a focus in agricultural economics hmm. Um, But we're really hoping, fingers crossed, they're working on getting a sport management concentration put into the program. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was in undergrad, I got a marketing degree with a minor in sport business. So I'm hoping they get that sport management concentration in there. And then I'm going to pick that one up and kind of transfer over. Yeah, that's great. That's where where my heart's kind of (laughs) at. Congratulations. Um, When I was a a uh, senior in high school and getting ready to go to college, I could barely get dressed and get my car <laughs> pointed in the right direction. How in the world, what was it like? Did you bring your horses with you when you came? Yeah. So I, I was a freshman and they sent me down there with three horses. Um, and it was, it kept me on track. I'll put it like that. <laughs> and so um, you, you there's know. barn, there are barns there. Um, I'm assuming you, did you live in the dorm and did, did your horses have their own, their own dorm? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they probably had a nicer setup than I did. No, I lived in the phases and it was really nice over there. Um, but the, our barn, so most people think that we use the barn that's attached to where they have the rodeo there on campus. Um, that's actually what the equestrian team uses. Um, so we have a barn that's about 10 minutes off campus and we have outdoor arenas there and then coach lives right by those barns. So he kind of keeps an eye on everything. Um, but we have different size stalls that you can rent and our horses get put up there and they have little turnouts and everything. So it's, it's very interesting there. 
So I know um, you mentioned a while ago about, um, about, you know, having to tie the calves and um, how that freaks some people out. I know that um, I saw on your Facebook page where some community that you were affiliated with had tried to um, outlaw rodeoing and you were a big advocate for uh, defending that. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so there's definitely, um, I'm not going to lie, I've been at rodeos where I've been met with Nonviolent and violent protesters. Um, PETA is definitely one that, that that doesn't love rodeo, and you know I I have some friends that are into that organization, and they still try to learn. Um, so I think a lot of what happens with the public is they have a bad taste in their mouth about rodeo because there's definitely some bad apples in the sport. I mean, every every sport has those people that you're like, oh, we don't want to claim them, we don't like them either. Um, but I think what a lot of people don't realize is, you know, with rodeo and the Western industry as a whole, we do care so much, you know, even animals that are being raised for production or for slaughter, like we care so much about the animals and we invest so much time into them. And there's a lot of money invested into them too, that we're not out here to hurt them. We're actually out here to honor them. You know, when bucking horses, you know, a lot of people think that bucking horses have like uh, electrical currents that make them buck or sharp objects that make them buck. Um, it's actually like a cotton strap and the horses are trained from a young age to buck and the cattle are trained from a young age to run. And they're trained in certain ways, how to be tied or how to be thrown down so that they don't get hurt. And same thing with, you know, I just told you our barrel horses, they're not abused. We have, they have chiropractic people, acupuncture people, the bucking bulls have chiropractic. There's actually at the event I'm at, there's a bucking bull for charity going on where they bring out these bulls with dummies on them and they're training them to buck and they show them off to people. And it's really, really cool to talk to the contractors and stuff and see how they raise them up. Um, But I think a lot of what happens with the public is they're just not educated enough on the sport and rodeo people are so private about things and we're so quiet that we, we don't give that education to people. And that's what I try when I hear people, you know, when I meet protesters, you know, I'm like, can I talk to you? Can you come see how my horses are taken care of? Can I show you what we do so that you don't hate us and you don't have to love it, but maybe you could see what we're doing here. Yeah, that's really interesting because like when I went, I had a little bit of information, but my daughter uh, went with me and it was her very first rodeo and, you know, she didn't know what was going on. Um, what are some <laughs> other things that that you wish beginners who come to their very first rodeo, what are some other things they should know about the sport? I would say one thing that people don't realize is that like cowboys and cowgirls are very, very approachable. Um, we love when people come up and ask us questions. Um, we just did a, like a demonstration with the uh, University of Tennessee, like board, like the chancellor brought a round table in, and we got to meet with all these high up people at UT and educate them about our sport last year. And it was so cool because they're like, we just never realized that we could like come talk to you guys, <laughs> you know, um, we love to talk about it. We love to tell people what's going on. Um, and then other than that, I would say, again, our events are rooted in Western heritage and they do have a purpose somewhere down the line. It's not just something we put out there for a show. And I think what a lot of people don't realize is like, even at college rodeos, um, there's a lot of prize money up for grabs. And I think the difference between rodeo athletes and other athletes is that we don't have any guaranteed contracts. Um, How we do in the arena is what we've won for the week. And a lot of people, that's their job. Um, so it's, you know, people sometimes like we're not out there just putting on a show for people. We're out there trying to do our best and, you know, make a living at it. It's a little different than other sports. Sure. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if that's the direction we're, we're supposed to go with that, but. Yeah, no, that's it. That's fascinating. Um, I, I'm I've always been fascinated by the, like subcultures and you know things that like the rest of us are not exposed to because we if we're not you know rodeo stars like you are. So it's really interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'd say one thing too about the sport that a lot of people probably don't see from the outside is you know even so when we compete against other colleges and college rodeo, I've had people from other teams lend me horses. I've lent girls horses. We'll lend each other ropes. 
saddles. You'll see boys oftentimes helping out girls on the team or they'll help out kids from other schools in the boxes or behind the bucking chutes. Like the camaraderie in rodeo is amazing. Like even these people that are, you know, I just said like they're cutthroat competitors and this is their paycheck. They'll still go in there and do anything for somebody else. And I think that's something really cool about our sport too. Well, and I'm sure that you're um, very much an idol among some of those young um, future rodeo stars. And you mentioned that um, where you were there in Fort Worth at the stockyards, that that some of your idols were there. Who who are some of those idols in the sport that you're getting to compete against right now? So um, one that everybody knows is Haley Kinzel. She's actually not down here right now, but she is she's younger, but she is like electric and she's a great Christian. A lot of us really look up to her. Uh, she's a world champion also. Um, but right now there's somebody down here named Lindsay Sears. Um, and it's really cool because she's kind of making her comeback right now. She won a couple world championships back in like 2007, 2008. Um, so it's really cool. Cause I'm like, I'm in the same warm up arena as Lindsay Sears. And I watched her as a little kid. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, Brittany, uh, Posse Tanazi is down here. She is, um, going to the national finals rodeo in December here in a few weeks. Um, she's another big name. Oh goodness. There's a bunch down here. And Larry D guy is down here. She's actually someone I went to a, like a school with a few weeks ago, like learn, I paid to learn from her. <laughs> um, and now I'm competing in the same arena against her. Um, Whitney DeSalvo is down here. She's somebody that competed, uh, at a different college actually in our region. She went to University of Arkansas at Monticello. And I want to say she's already banked probably $5,000 this week in the team roping. Wow. Um, so she's a younger girl, but she's really broken down a lot of barriers. She was the, she's one of the highest ranked ropers in the world. And she's a female. And she was the first one to ever basically get ranked as high as she is. Um, so that's something that's like outstanding because I mean, she wipes the floor with the boys. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's really fun to watch her. So, yeah. And, and so um, and you've mentioned a few times uh, your faith and I know that's really important to you. Um, how does your faith uh, impact your, your sport? It, honestly, it's just such a blessing to get the chance to make money at something that I love this much. Um, and be a part of it. You know, I, I didn't have my first two rounds of competition down here. I haven't done amazing. Um, but my horses have worked really good and they're really healthy. Um, it's just little bobbles. And I always have to remind myself that, you know, a lot of people will pray to win or, you know, try to do good or try to make it to the next round. But I always believe that God gives us the opportunity to compete and to do the sport we love. And if he keeps us healthy at the end of the day, that's all that matters. You know, I don't, I see it a little differently than some people, but you know, God doesn't really care if you win first place or second place, he's letting you do it and he's letting you compete. And that's just something that's awesome. I think that, that we get to do this, but there's definitely, that's another good thing about rodeo is it's, it's a great group of Christian people. Um, there's cowboy churches going on down here and all kinds of other stuff. So it's great because you get some fellowship along with everything. And I just, there's something at least, you know, I know no matter what happens in the arena that I'm still standing on the rock. And at the end of the day, you know, Jesus is still my Lord and savior. And that's the best part. Excellent. And I noticed that there are also, in addition to like uh, church services, and there's also like motivational uh, presentations going on at this event you're at. Mm -hmm. Is that like, what, tell me, what is that all about? So there is at the cowgirl gathering that's going on down here this weekend, there's a lot of like women singers, writers, um, media uh, personalities, um, and then athletes that are speaking um, that are kind of teaching everybody their ways. There's a woman down here named Donnie and Taylor um, that wrote a book called the heart of the champion. Um, and she's a motivational speaker and she does it from a rodeo based perspective, which is awesome. <laughs> um, it's really cool. They, they talk a lot about mental toughness and, you know, how to take yourself seriously as an athlete. Um, just things like that. So it's cool. There's a lot of, a lot of women speakers down here. This is a big deal for women athletes down here. So that sounds kind of the first great. Of it's kind this week. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm sure that they're having to deal with, uh, like all of us that are uh, in in America, in the world with COVID-19, how has that impacted um, rodeo? Oh, golly. it's It's been rough. Um, 
you know, like I said, that if we don't have rodeos to go to, um, we're not making money. And a lot of rodeos are put on from sponsorship money from local businesses when you go, you know, to these small towns. Um, so, you know, just like what we've, what we dealt with at UT Martin, when we didn't get to have our rodeo, um, yeah, it's a competition, but it's a huge fundraiser for our team. Um, and that really hurt in terms of scholarship money, in terms of having money to buy practice stock, uh, things like that. And then, you know, businesses can, they can't sponsor rodeos. They can't support us, not because they don't want to, but because they're hit hard by it too. Um, so when the economy's struggling, rodeo's definitely struggling. And, you know, it was crazy for about, what was it? Four or five months there. We didn't have anywhere to go. Um, we were all just sitting at home training our horses. I mean, people came out and their horses were so in shape and so pain-free and so fast. It was crazy, but everybody was just kind of sitting at home waiting. And I mean, it, it hurt the industry a lot because of the price of horses. Um, you know, trainers were hurting because people didn't have the money to send their horses there. Um, it was just, it was a crazy year. We're, we're so used to traveling around and having all these places to go. We kind of took it for granted and, and it all just went away, <laughs> but it's, it's on the up and up. It's coming back right now. We, we may not have as many spectators as stuff as we used to, but at least we're getting to have some events again. Yeah. Do, um, are they, uh, requiring people to sort of social distance in the stands and are you having to wear masks while you're not on the horse? Yeah. So if we're anywhere, um, you know, on the grounds here, we have to have a mask on. Um, we do social distance uh, at the college rodeos, especially they've been really strict um, because, you know, they don't want us bringing things back to campus. I mean, they screen us every day. We have to record our temperatures every day, do a symptom check. Um, even while I'm down here, I have to send symptoms back to our athletic trainer on campus um, <laughs> to kind of make sure we're all staying healthy. And then, you know, you'll see guys on the bucking shoots or in the roping boxes helping with masks on they do limit the amount of people in the arena, um, things of that nature. I know the, the team's going to be at Murray state this weekend and they're not even allowed to have a crowd because it's indoors. Yeah. So it's definitely a different landscape. <laughs> well, we're going to, we're soon going to turn the, turn the page on this and there's going to be a vaccine and we're going to be back to being able to have live events and, and sports yes, and we are rodeos. Have the UTM rodeo. <laughs> Absolutely. I can't wait. Now, I miss um, it. <laughs> what's, what's next for you? Like what, um, what are you seeing in the future for Casey Allen, the Casey Allen brand? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I have my pro card this year. Um, I did buy like my women's professional rodeo association card last year as a rookie, um, which was a really horrible year to be a rookie <laughs> because <laughs> they canceled everything and I had to go home and take care of my mom's business. Um, mm. but I'll be buying my pro card again this year. I already have a little bit of a foothold. Uh, I did place at a rodeo already. Um, and with some of the money this week, some of the opportunities that should go towards that. And I'm hoping this next year to get in uh, the top 50 or top 100 in the world. And then in a couple of years, I'd like to make a run for the national finals rodeo, uh, which is like the Super Bowl of rodeo. <laughs> um, it's usually held in Las Vegas. Um, and it's, it's a lot. It's about $26,000 a night that you can win. Wow. Um, that's amazing. So that's where they crown the world champions. And that's, you know, and I, I'll of course be fulfilling my duties to UTM rodeo in the meantime, I'll be getting to coach a little bit more next year and that'll be a lot of fun. Um, and then after that, I just, goodness, I guess try to find a job that supports my habit. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fascinating. Um, <laughs> it's so interesting that you uh, get to live in that world. Um, where, where could, if somebody wanted to keep up with you and follow your exploits, where should they find you on social media? So I am, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter on Facebook. My page is Casey Allen rodeo athlete. And then my Instagram is at Casey Allen and N N cause I had to get a new Instagram cause my last one got hacked. Um, and then I'm CA rodeo 007 on Twitter. And then you can always of course keep up with UTM rodeo. We're on all social media platforms. We're on Snapchat also. Um, and then I do, I do help a little bit with updating their pages. Um, and then we, we pretty much have live results from the rodeos and things of that nature. So you can keep up with me and the whole team that way. 
That's so interesting. I have been so looking forward to talking to you about this, and you have taught me so much about rodeo, and I'm going to uh, be able to go to the big UTM rodeo next year and understand so much more what's going on. So thank you for that. <laughs> yes, it should be in April. So make sure once we're, uh, we'll probably be selling tickets online this year. So okay. everybody will have to watch out for that this spring. Um, it should be, it's usually the second or third weekend of April. Okay, and well, it's definitely can, you, family friendly event. I was just going to say you can count me and my whole family in awesome. for tickets. We're excited, and I'm I'm going to have to hear some more stories later about these uh, early show days you had <laughs> with the quarter horses. I am I'm intrigued now. Yeah, I'll I'll definitely tell you. I can tell you that uh, <laughs> my career was much more uh, short lived, and I didn't win anything but like fourth place and uh, best attitude kind of trophies. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's still something you've got to have a good attitude <laughs> <laughs> that's right well thanks so much again it was wonderful having you on the podcast yes thank you guys so much for having me and getting to talk about my favorite thing <laughs> thank you for listening to real foot forward be sure to like subscribe and leave us a review start planning your visit to discovery park of america by visiting discoveryparkofamerica.com and also be sure to follow us on facebook instagram and twitter for the latest updates